In this video, we're going to discuss setting up and managing filters. So we've made our way back to the events tab. And from here, we can see all of the live traffic flowing into our SIM, as well as all the filters we're currently using. All the filters you see on the left have been included out of the box. They're all very useful, but we will want to manage and add our own as time goes on to tailor it to our environment. We may also need to adjust these default filters to correctly show our own data. So let's talk a little bit about why filters are important and why we want to use them. Well, filters essentially allow us to take our complete stream of data from all of our data sources and break it down into useful sections or subsections or nuggets. Okay, so they help you drill down on things that are important for your organization and they help you keep track of how many of those events you're getting within a window of time. Um, you can also use the data in your filters, the the parameters and conditions of your filters to help you build widgets in your dashboard. If you want to have a visualization of a particular filter, um, it's easy enough to do simply by duplicating those conditions on the dashboard screen. In addition to using them for dashboards, you can also very easily export them out into a rule template to easily add an automated action associated with that. So for example, if I wanted to add some sort of action, perhaps a, an email notification or an incident alert, or some sort of automated Windows action like disabling the networking or disabling an account, etc. I could go find any one of these filters that I might care about, such as important FIM events. And I could simply click on the, the drop down for that particular filter and click on send filter to rule. And that will take us directly to the rules page under a new rule and it will, it will exactly duplicate the conditions of this filter to allow us to simply add an action onto that. Okay. Let's have a look at a couple of examples and see how these filters are constructed, how we might repurpose them for our own situation, and how we might be able to create similar filters that uh, play on the initial filter, but are useful in different scenarios. So let's have a look at this failed logon for an example. We'll just go to on the little drop down there next to it, click on edit, and we can see how this thing is constructed. So this is a pretty simple filter. We're essentially looking for two distinct events, either a failed authentication event, which occurs, or a user logon failure event. These are the most common types of failures you're going to see when you're looking for failed logons, no matter what the source is. Okay, so this is a very simple example, but let's say we want to repurpose this for a slight variation or for our own situation, right? I'm going to cancel this and we're going to go create our own. So I'm going to go back down here and I'm going to click on authentication drop down and do an add new filter. And we're going to say domain admin failed logons or logon failures, whatever you want to call it. We're going to make a slight variation where we incorporate a user defined group or a, a directory service group, either would work in this situation, to essentially focus the logon failures for specific accounts, specifically our domain admin accounts, which have very high uh, access and we want to keep a close eye on those. So um, to do that, we'll simply recreate Those two events, but we're going to add a, we're going to add a slight uh, we're going to add a slight variation here. So let's um, add a destination account field onto this, and we're going to do the same thing for user login failure. We'll add a destination account there. Okay, change that back to an or as it should be. Okay, now. On the right side, we have the option of simply adding a string of text, a constant, or we can drag and drop a particular group or a user defined group or connector profile or any of these other options you see on this left side here. So in this case, let's say I have a predetermined list of, of domain admins. I happen to actually have one of those under directory service groups. I can simply drag and drop my list of domain admins to that box on the right. Now we have a filter that is complete and it does the same function as the initial filter, but is limited to just these accounts in scope. If I scroll down, I can see my new filter here somewhere. There we go. And we already have a failure apparently. Okay, administrators failed a log on somewhere. So this keeps a, a very close eye on the important accounts that we care about. Let's try another example. Say you want to maybe use this a little bit more for compliance, right? Right now, our compliance group at the very bottom is a little, a little sparse, it's empty. So we could add a few filters onto this that have compliance-related activities, such as 
looking at the events of um, the account disablings of users that have just left the company, right? We want to show that we have disabled their account in a timely fashion, okay? We could add a quick user disable filter on this uh, bottom section here. So let's click on the add new filter and we'll say, just keep it, keep it simple, disabled accounts. And if we look for a user disable event, we can click on that and then drag over the event info. And we're gonna add a little detail to this to avoid having this filter confused with something like an account lockout because user disable events actually encumber, encompass um, account lockouts, accounts, account disablings, um, things of that nature, right? So it couldn't, it's not necessarily just we went into Active Directory and locked out or disabled a user. Um, it could be that someone fat fingered their password and locked themselves out, right? So we want to differentiate between the two. So what I can do is add something like this. Okay, and then we're gonna change this to not equal lockout. So this will show us every user disable event that isn't an actual account lockout, which should encompass the events that we care about in this situation. Okay, so I'll save that. So we have another useful filter. Let's try one more example where we kind of incorporate uh, some of our learnings from the rules video. Um, if I scroll down here towards the bottom, we have a built-in filter here for USB Defender. And this filter, if we have a quick look at it, is going to show us essentially all USB Defender events. That's literally all this filter does, right? There's no, there's no filter beyond that. So um, let's say I wanted to use them to automatically block or unattach specific USB devices that weren't in my whitelist. Okay, we can use rules and data for that. But um, I need to differentiate, I need a new filter to differentiate between all USB Defender events everywhere and just the ones that aren't in my whitelist. So I know which ones that I need, need to keep an eye on or um, adjust and add to my whitelist if necessary, etc. But let's make a, let's make a new filter here and, and uh, have a new filter account for that. So I'm going to say non-white listed USB Defender events, or something to that effect. Okay, so, so I can start off with the same initial parameter that the initial filter used, which was the any alert event group with the tool alias, sorry, that is not correct, the provider SID of wildcard, USB wildcard. Okay, that should encompass all USB Defender events everywhere. So we need to add on to that. We wanna add a condition that says if this uh, particular device's unique identifier is not in my whitelist, then show up in this filter. So to do that, I'm gonna add a different type of event called system status, which is the event type you'll see that USB Defender uses for literally everything except for the file activity stuff. So I'm gonna go system status and I'm gonna add this extraneous info field, like so. So extraneous info, if you look at these USB Defender events, this actually shows you the unique identifier in this particular field, and that's all it shows. So this is a very useful field to know if you plan on using USB Defender. So I want to say, instead of typing a particular item here, I'm going to have a look for my authorized USB devices user-defined group and just drag it over to that right side. And in this case, I want to change the operator here or the operand to be is not in. So essentially this is a, a USB Defender event that is not in my authorized whitelist. Okay, so if I save that, I will have a new filter down next to the old one that will give me that level of clarity, okay? Now we're going to go through one final example of actually editing one of the default filters to better suit our environment. Because some of these filters have very generic keywords or generic terms that may or may not apply to your situation. I'm going to show you one example you may want to do on your own system. So if I scroll up here slightly, there's going to be a filter here for all firewall traffic. 
but I do have to spot it. There we go. So all firewall events. Let's have a look at this one. Now, I've already modified this one, but if you look at your particular filter, you'll see by default the condition is any alert dot to alias is equal to, and it's not ASA, it's wildcard firewall wildcard. Okay, so what this means is any event that has a connector name of something firewall something is is going to apply here. But most of our connectors and most of our um, default names for those connectors don't usually have the name firewall in them because they may not be firewall specific. Okay, so what I want to do here, if I were if I were uh, going to configure this from my particular firewall, is I either need to adjust the connector name to have the word firewall in it, or probably a better idea is going to be just adjust this filter so it actually points to a keyboard that is in that connector name. So in this example, I have a Cisco ASA and iOS connector reading my firewall data. I use the keyword ASA. If I were using um, FortiGate, I could easily change this to wildcard, FortiGate, wildcard. Okay, so you want to change it to your situation. And there are there are certain filters that you may want to do this for. You may need to do this for before you see any data in it. You'll see I have quite a few filter filters here that are currently at a zero count. It may be because I'm not logging that data, or it could be I need to make an adjustment there to apply to my situation. In any case, that's all you should really need to know about, about uh, filters. Thanks for your attention, and we'll see you in the next time.